Why are men afraid of demons more than they believe in the presence of angels sent to them? Because in the imagination, the picture that is prevalent is the picture of satanic attacks. But for one demon, for two demons, put it this way, for 100 demons positioned to attack you, there are 1 million angels positioned to keep you. Elijah put it this way to his servant Gehazi. Ndi nonyerai karere. So the angels for us are mightier and greater than those who are against us. But because our mindset is built on those who are against us, then because it is your thought that runs your life, it will run you down towards those that are against you. That's why angels are among us, but they are stranded because we are not consciously attached to them. We are consciously attached to demons. For every 3,000 plans of attack against you, there are 3 billion plans of God to keep you. Because wherever sin abounds, grace abounds much more. The word much more actual lubaba, hubaba loon in the Greek word simply means grace is hyper. Wherever sin increases, grace becomes hyper. So the grace of God by nature actually is hyper. Because anywhere there are 10 demons, grace is 1 million. Anywhere there are two dangerous angels, there are two, two dangerous demons, there are two dangerous angels, tripled. So grace by nature is hyper. They have 20 plans to kill you today. There are 2 billion plans to keep you alive. But because we have not renewed our mind with the consciousness of God's consciousness or God's word, that's where the matter is. Tell your neighbor, change your thoughts, for your thoughts runs your life. If there are witches around you, for example, let me tell you this story, then we're about to pray. When I was in Abba years ago, something happened. Am robbers came to our house to steal. If you hear the sound of gun, you are going to die before your time. About Abba was also tawarara, tawarara. No, in the sound of gun, ceaseless bullet, ka 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 ka. Everything on the street on the run. I was still taken. People I was living with then, in the, the, they were all praying. You know that kind of prayer, you are not concentrated. <laughs> then something strange happened. I was on my bed. They will shot an arrow in my mind. If they come inside and see you on the bed, they will know and they will say, this is the organ of the house. Come down from the bed and make sure you lay yourself on the rock. When they come in, they will ask you, where is the organ? That is clever. Meanwhile, I, I was on the bed thinking because I know that nobody knows Jesus never where you may escape. Okay, may escape. What you call disappear? Okay, disappear. What you call one present? He will stay present. Nothing will happen. I said to God, How do I connect? Because I'm a good neighbor. I didn't have any hand. As we were talking, I'm robbers climbed, climbed the wall and entered my compound because we are going from one compound to another throughout the whole street. Then it was my turn in the compound. They entered my compound. And before they, when they entered, they entered the first floor. It was three-story building, about six flats. They entered the first one, broke the down wall, the door, entered, and stole. I was still thinking, what do I do? They finished there, just relaxed from one flat to another. From one flat, breaking and shooting. In one, you no noise. Na compound and this na one na gana one. Uma go na gabata no. So you get ready. When I was doing that, as the devil shot that arrow in my heart, the Holy Ghost said to me, "I was already obeying." He said, "No, if you go down, you believe they are coming inside. Stay there." I said, "What do I do by staying on the bed? Is it moping? What will I be doing?" Then he said to me, "He that keepeth God's power does not sleep." No slumber. I said yes. He said, chew into it. 
if I am awake, then you into it and see me awake, keeping you. Key into it and see me away keeping you. So I have to change my thoughts because your thoughts runs your tell your neighbor, your thoughts runs your life. So I moved my thoughts away from the trouble. I, I moved it into the scripture. Then I saw the image of God standing because every word of God will paint give, give you an image. So I saw the wall. Then I, in my spirit, I moved back. I connected. I said, he that keepeth God's power does not sleep nor slumber. Then I said, God, if you are awake keeping me, then I should be humble enough to sleep for you to do your work. That was my faith. Then I kept saying that. Instead of me, I withdrew from my spirit, responded to the world. They entered the first flat, finished telling. Got to the second flat, finished telling. Climb the first, the first flat upstairs, finished telling. Go to the first one, finish telling. Then came to the second floor where I live, went to the back floor, the back flat, finish telling. Left my flat, went to the third one, finished telling up and down. Then came down to my flat. Only one knock. Boo! Boo! The one standing outside shouted, Oh boy, come out, danger day. And that was the only flood they didn't enter. They broke everywhere, stole everywhere, and that was the only flood they didn't enter. Because it is your thoughts that runs your life. Stand to your feet.